Hello, and welcome back. Today I'm going to explain to you why I have my pedal board set up the way I do. Do you want to know this? Do you care to know this? No. Here we go. Let's dive in. We're going to work our way from the right side over here all the way to the left, and then we'll be done. First, we have the polytune. This is to tune my guitar. Next, we have the hypergravity mini compressor. And this I use as an always on sort of effect. I just leave it on the whole time. It boosts my signal a little bit. I don't have very much sustain or compression on, but there's a tiny bit. Next, we go to the haunting mids by JHS. This I use as a boost or what I use it for is adjusting the sweep because then I can soften up anything that sounds a little too bright and harsh or if it's too mellow I can make it sound even better by brightening it up a little bit. Next is the Walrus Audio Voyager which is a preamp overdrive and you can't read that from over here but it's it's right down here it says preamp overdrive. Next it's one of my favorite pedals, the, the Chase Bliss Audio Warped Vinyl. It's a vibrato and a chorus, and it's analog. And I use it as a vibrato and a chorus because it's analog. <laughs> Next, I have the JHS Unicorn V2. It's small, and it has a unicorn on it, and that's cool. But I also like the vibrato sound because then I can have a vibrato if I'm using this as a chorus, or I can use this as a really, really fast vibrato and use this one as a slow vibrato. And that's also very cool. I also like the Univibe sound. And I played with putting these in with this, the Unicorn going before the Warped Vinyl and vice versa. And I found that having the Warped Vinyl first was better because in my opinion, it sounded better with the Warped Vinyl being first. After the Unicorn is the Pipeline tap, trempo, tap Tremolo. That's just a pretty straightforward tremolo. It has lots of different subdivisions, and it has this really cool one where it does quarter notes and then triplets, and that's very cool. It also has a tone print switch for their little app thing, and it has a square wave shape. From there, we go into the JHS Lucky Cat Delay, and I have on the side, it's there's a, a little toggle switch. And I have it switched to the, the vintage tape. It makes the delays a little bit warmer sounding, not quite as pristine. And I like to keep the darken knob pretty low because it gives it a pseudo analog delay sound without it really being an analog delay sound. After that, we go to The Slow by Walrus Audio, which is a great reverb. I use that for everything. I like all of the modes. I like everything it does, and I think it sounds great. This is the first half of the pedal board in the way that I think of it. After that comes this stuff. I can stop right there and be fine. I can get great sounds just by using this half of the pedal board. If I'm just like playing normally. After the slow, we come up and we go to the signal blender. The signal blender takes the input and sends it to the mood in the A channel, to the B channel, the blooper. And I did that on purpose because this is blue and this is blue and this is a reddish pinkish color and this is an orange and reddish and pinkish color. And B also stands for blooper. So I put it in the B one. Then the clean signal comes out of the signal blender, which goes into here and here separately, and that goes into the Zoya. Only in the left channel, though. That's important. And why, you ask, is that important? Well, it's because of this. This is why that's important. This goes into the right channel input of the Zoya, and that allows for the magic to happen. But let's step back. We're getting ahead of ourselves. 
let me go back to the signal blender. The way I have it set up is we come into the mood, the mood I leave set at max mix, all wet, because that way we can blend in the clean signal and the wet signal, and then I can separate them out in whatever way I want. And then on the blooper, we have the dry kill dip switch turned on because then that way I don't hear the guitar signal twice. And that was a note that Andy Othling gave, which is great because it makes the signal blender make so much more sense because you basically use it as a little mixer and you just mix the various inputs and you basically say clean is my guitar input or in this case everything up to the slow up to about here and then you're mixing this with this and this and it just makes everything make a little bit more sense so then after all of that we get to do whatever the heck we want my standby my go-to is a patch that I made called Ambient, which you probably can't read. That's okay. You don't need to. And what that does is, by default, just by turning it on, it makes this pedal board stereo. Then you press the little select button, and that engages two effects that are on there, which is delay, a ping pong delay, and a stereo reverb. But that way, if you record any loops on the blooper or on the mood, you can have it be stereo and you can add on some extra delay and some extra reverb, which is great. But you can also turn it off if you don't want it and you just want it to have a stereo signal. If I leave it off, I remain mono and I just can go out. So I have this guy set up to go into the left output and the right output. Though, if I'm staying mono, I can just plug into the left output. But if I'm going stereo, then I can plug into both. Best of both worlds, in my opinion. Additionally, this ambient patch is set up to receive an input from this ABY box. So I can plug in an extra instrument into either A or B channel, and I can switch between them or have both of them at once, which means I get to add on up to two extra instruments to this entire rig, which is pretty sweet. And the last part about this ambient patch that I have set up is I have a looper engaged on there for this instrument only. So what that means is I can take something like the OP-1, I can plug it in here, and then I can loop something from the OP-1. It'll hit these effects and be looped and come out of the two inputs that I already have for my guitar. So I don't have to worry about plugging in an extra input in my audio interface or if I was going to a live show or something, I just would have two inputs always. That's it. Or two outputs, I'm sorry. But then I could add extra instruments, change them, do whatever I want. It doesn't matter because it's all kind of isolated down to this pedal board which is super helpful. Additionally, in case I have it set up that way, carry in my pick container a long quarter inch cable. It's not that long. It's a, it's a patch cable, but it's like 22 inches or something. So I can use this boss foot switch because I set up this ambient patch where if I plug in that cable to here and use the control port switch back here, then I can hit the foot switch and it will engage recording in that loop. And then I can hit it again and it'll stop it and start playing that loop. So that way I don't have to touch the Zoya at all. That way I can basically, with either an external instrument or my guitar, or if I want to plug something into here, then I can and go through all the pedals but either way, I have my sound building at its base, at its fundamental, and then this is crafting some other musical aspect of it. Coming from granular synthesis, granular synthesis, granular looping and such, and, and delays, coming from just looping and editing those loops, and then this coming from any type of synthesis to just added effects to more looping to whatever I want. Uh, even the utilitarian kind of aspect of bringing another instrument in to the whole mix to add into that sound. The only two things I haven't talked about 
are this slider and this pedal. So this is just connected to the mood because I have um, it set to a specific bank where I saved some presets, some extra presets. And the first one is a reverb with a reverb on the uh, the old blood noise noise side, and then um, the stretch mode on the looping side, so it can create a standard kind of uh, granular pad out of whatever input. Then the same thing on the second one, but then I have a delay, and I have it set to a pretty warm, analogy kind of feel delay. And then the blank one is whatever I have it set to here. The slider is also coming to the mood and that's being used as an expression for the clock because then that way I can do some fast and quick kind of movements of it but I know that this will not go below a point that I don't like where it can get too a uh, bit crushy where if I'm not prepared for that or I am not purposefully wanting to do that I don't want to accidentally do it that's basically it that's how I use my pedal board that's how it's set up Everything goes to one power source that's underneath here. You can see it there. I put a lot of effort into keeping all the cables clean because I like that. And I put a lot of thought into why I have this set up um, and how to use it because I'm trying to think and keep in mind uh, if I were to do a live performance, I don't want to bring a ton of gear to one place. And this helps create a lot of possibilities all on one board. Thank you for watching. I hope this made sense. If you have questions about how I use this or anything at all, please drop them in the comments below. I will answer them. I look at the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe, please. That's all for this video. Thank you and goodbye.